Sports Link is brought to you by Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape. The ESA Football League kicked off with the JFK Islanders hosting the Southern High Dolphins Friday night. Southern came out establishing their running game. Number 25, Isaiah Taposnia, with a spin move, takes it right up the middle through the Islanders' defense for the first touchdown of the game. 6-0 Dolphins after the PAT was no good. Jaron Leon Guerrero with that hit stick. Leon Guerrero with great timing on the play to break up the pass. Islanders forced to punt. Southern's chance is Stavis with the first down carry here. Josiah Quintaniza sets up Southern in good field position. Quintaniza with the toss right, fakes the reverse, and gets tackled inside the five-yard line. Jacoby Kanata with the touchdown-saving tackle for JFK. Dante Salas would punch it in for the 12-0 Dolphins lead. Point after attempt was no good. Another miscue on offense by JFK puts Southern in prime position for another score. Josiah Quintaniza would get in for the short touchdown run. Southern would score their last points of the game off a of safety and go on to win 20-6. The Lady Tritons Women's Rugby Sevens Tournament kicked off at the UOG field in Mingilao. Joining the University of Guam Tritons women's rugby team are High Performance, Paratotu, and Hybrids. High Performance took the first game of the day 34-0 over Paratotu. The Tritons lost their first game to Hybrids 7-0. UOG opened its first matches in history of the institution with three losses. The Lady Tritons hit the field with a thin roster as several members weren't able to suit up for the opener. High Performance defeated UOG 42-0. UOG's third loss of the tournament was to Paratotu 32-0. Other scores, Paratotu 14-5 winners over Hybrids. High Performance got the win over Hybrids 34-7. The tournament will conclude Saturday with the following schedule. 10 in the morning, the number one seed High Performance taking on number four seed UOG Tritons. 10.30, the number two seed Paratotu will be taking on third seed Hybrids. At 11.30, the third place match will be taking place between the losers of the semifinals. And then at noon, the championship match will go down between the winners of the semifinals. All matches will be played at the UOG Rugby Field. No spectators or fans will be allowed inside the playing area. All games will be shown live on the UOG Athletic YouTube channel. Gabe Baker from Carlson Gracie here to talk about the recent belt promotion. Carlson Gracie Jr. back on island for a short time uh, visiting the academies. I think that was one for the books, but for the Carlson Gracie Guam, um, there's a bunch of us that got promoted myself. Of course, I got a couple of my senior students that have been with me since like since, since 2003. Uh, we got guys like uh, uh, Cliff, Cliff Nettedog that um, uh, runs the Jigo Academy, uh, Carlos uh, Griffith. Uh, Ashley Pueblo, uh, Chris Camacho, and one of my star athletes, uh, Anthony Cruz. Um, I, it was, uh, and you know, the funny thing about it is that I was, I was uh, excited for myself. I mean, it was something that I was already inevitant that I was gonna inevitable that I was gonna get promoted, and everybody knew that. But for me to get promoted with my students, I think that was the biggest, um, that was the biggest thing for me. You know, I was really heartfelt, and I mean, it was emotional, man. I mean, just uh, these guys started with me since years ago. And to, to be there, to be promoted with them together, that was a big thing, man. That was really something for me. You know, with all the social media posts and everybody congratulating you, um, the number one thing that really stood out was long awaited, overdue and stuff like that. But you being the guy you are, uh, definitely humble. It, it wasn't something you were expecting, but it was something that, you know, if it comes, it comes and it was well-deserving. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I mean, a lot of people, um, now, a lot of people say that. I mean, I, one thing about me is, like, I just, I just keep tracking, you know? I mean, I started, I started the academy, opened the academy when I was a blue belt, and, you know, I, just, I just, just kept training with the guys and, and did what I needed to do. I never really thought about the belt. The belts just came, you know? My, along of, even my blue belt, my blue belt journey to purple, I was, I was a blue belt for six years. So it was, I never really thought about it, you know, about, uh, oh, my belt made a difference. Because I just started, I just did what I needed to do for the academy, you know? For you, um, enjoying your athletes and your students um, being productive and, and, and progressing in the game and, and going out there and, and, and showing the sport to the world because um, representing Carlson Gracie, I'm sure when he came back and he saw how many students and how the gym evolved, he was probably happy to see that. Yeah, he was blown away. He was just like, you know, 
here's this little island and, and, and we got all these people. I mean, you see this, some of the pictures on the post and stuff of the, the team that's combined with Diego and, and Nigua and uh, Carson Gracie and Nigua. And it was just, it, it was, oh, he was like, wow. He was just blown away. I mean, that didn't even include our kids. We have a huge kids program. So, you know, it, it was just, it was just overwhelming. I mean, really awesome, man. Really awesome to see a big change. The Tees and High Titans open their Issa girls volleyball season with a win over the Southern High Dolphins. After taking the first set 25-12, Tees and kept the momentum going, taking a 10-7 lead in the second set. Zoe and Alessio gets the return to fall far left of the Dolphins defense. Chifana Fedrick whipped up a few aces while teammate Kaya Nedadog put down some shots to keep the home team ahead. Southern's Raylan Sanagustin gets her shot to go off a teasing defender for the score. Titans took the second set 25-14. Southern High's Tasi Napati was altering shots returned by teasing. Napati making her presence felt in the middle. Ariana Flores helps tie the game at 10 for the visiting squad. Deneen Cruz put teasing up by two points, getting her shot to fall in play. Ariel Salas came up with a few late aces for the 22-18 Titans lead. Netadog with another Titans score here. Teasing looking to wrap things up at home in three sets. Immaculate Cabral rotating, waiting for the set, goes up and puts it down with authority. Chifana Fedrick helped close out the match as the home team went on to win 25-19. In other matches, Sanchez defeated GW at the FD Gym in four sets, 21-25, 25-22, 25-19, 25-22. Play resumes tomorrow evening. Ukudu taking on Southern at Southern. GW taking on GAA at FD. Teasing versus JFK at JFK. And Sanchez will have a bye. The Masakata Guam's women's national team returned to international football after a three-year absence against the United Arab Emirates. In the team's opener of the AFC Women's Asian Cup, India 2022 qualifiers in Bishkek, Kyrgyz Republic, April Toledo's 28th minute goal lit up the scoreboard for Guam's early advantage, but UAE fought back to eke out a slim 2-1 win. The match against the UAE was the first international match in three years for the Masakata and the team's first AFC tournament match in 18 years. Guam next plays against Myanmar, the highest ranked team in the group on October 21st. At 5 p.m. Bishkek time, 9 p.m. Guam time, a live stream link will be provided closer to match day and will be announced via Guam Football Association's social media platforms. Camden Camacho, one of the members on this year's Davis Cup team, representing Guam in Bahrain. Pretty tough pool that uh, Guam has been uh, uh, selected in. Our pool currently uh, is UAE. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, and us. Um, it's a really tough pull. Um, I mean, Bahrain being the host nation, although they are ranked fourth in the in our pool, um, they have solid players, solid one, um, and then solid doubles. Uh, UAE is the first. Uh, they're they're the number one team ranked in the whole uh, in the whole Davis Cup. Uh, Asia Pacific Oceania um, tournament and Saudi Arabia is the second ranked in our pool and they also have solid players, um, ex college players, um, players who are about to jo go to colleges um, and play for like really what well, really good D one schools and and everything. So um, overall, like we knew going in that this is going to be a tough um, competition, tough pool and everything and we're just trying to give it our all. This is the second time you're representing Guam. Fairly young mm -hmm. team and it's more about the experience and just um, getting used to this caliber of play. I've represented Guam for Pacific uh, Pacific Games and it's been um, it's definitely a different level of um, caliber overall I'd say um, especially from 2019 when, I, when we were in Jordan um, the players that we the, or like the teams that we faced off against uh, were not as as tough as this pool and just I yeah going in through learning having this great experience against really great players um, high level players uh, even though even though we are not getting the re results that we wanted um, like just knowing that we gave it all and fought it out fought out there and and tried and, and played is 
is what the whole experience is and having fun while we're doing that is is all we can wish for what's next for guam uh, who, who do we have uh, for the next uh, few matches tomorrow's rest day uh, and then we play Bahrain, the host nation on friday uh, which we actually have a solid shot at, at taking that um and then after that after friday we depending on if we beat Bahrain or, or lose Bahrain, we'll be placed um, either third or fourth in our pool and then we'll end up playing on saturday against either the third or fourth um corresponding uh uh teams in the in another pool uh, we don't know who team that is uh because other matches are still happening today tomorrow and all the and then friday um and then that'll determine the match on saturday in programming news you know how we do it over here at the stations of kuam monday october 25th at three in the morning nfl on cbs the first of a doubleheader for you kansas city chiefs at the Tennessee Titans. And then at 6.25 in the morning, more NFL on CBS, the Chicago Bears at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Switch it over to KUAM TV 8, 10.20 in the morning, NBC Sunday Night Football, the Indianapolis Colts at San Francisco 49ers. SportsLink is brought to you by Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape.